In this video, I'm gonna take this giant pile of poplar and turn it into this 13-foot display table for a local store. It was big, it was awkward. This is how I did it. White snow, red sky, reach up for so, so high. When it comes to building tables, I always seem to fall into the same habit, and that is to build the legs first, and then, well, build everything off of the legs. So the first thing I did was take some stock poplar and mill it down into a bunch of strips of eight quarter. Then I was gonna glue those eight quarter pieces together, two pieces per leg, to make up a total of six legs. That's right, six legs. This is a pretty flippin' big table. Now, I could have glued each leg together individually, but I'm just kinda lazy. So I decided to do them all at the same time in one giant block. Now, I do it this way quite often. You just wanna remember when gluing everything together not to put glue in between each individual leg. That'll leave you with a giant piece of wood that will not support a table very well. With all of our blocks glued up and dried, we took them out of clamps. Now, they're gonna be a little wonky right now, and that's okay, because the first thing we're gonna do is run them through the joiner on two sides to get two perfectly flat reference points. Then I run them through the planer using those two square sides as my reference, and finally I cut them down to size over on the chop saw. You should be left with six identical legs, well, that look exactly like this. Nice and square and ready to be made into a table. Next, I'm going to connect first my end pieces. So I cut down some stock poplar that I'm gonna use as my apron and my lower stretcher in between my outer two legs. Then I cut a little eighth inch groove on the top of the apron That'll hold our little Z fasteners that we'll use to hold our tabletop on. And then we just kind of lay everything out on the work table to get the correct shape that we're looking for. I use some little five inch spacer blocks to position my lower stretcher. It's gonna sit exactly five inches off of the floor. And then I mark everything out for my domino joiner. Yes, I'm using the domino joiner again, but like I always say, if you don't have one, just use a doweling jig. It'll work exactly the same. Now, as you can see in the video, the apron's actually flush with our table leg. I don't really want it this way. I actually want the apron to sit down about an inch below the table leg. But that's all right, we can do all those adjustments with the domino joiner. I'll show you here, well, right now. First, we're going to mortise out the holes in our apron and our stretcher, just smack dab in the middle of those two pieces. Next, we're gonna adjust the plate on our domino joiner so that it goes down a little deeper, and we're gonna mortise out the holes on our legs to sit down one inch below that top surface. This will make the apron and the stretcher recessed back in and give us the look that we're going for. But before I hook anything together, I like to pre-sand everything, you know, just to make my life a lot easier when I get to actually finishing things. So with everything pre-sanded, I just start, you know, putting it together. Dominoes and holes, holes and dominoes, lots of glue, and smack it with a hammer. That's pretty much all you gotta do. And when you're done, you should have two identical end pieces of our table. Nice and sturdy. See, they even hold my fat butt. Now, this is where things start getting a little scary. Remember I mentioned this table is 13 feet long, and the only wood that I could source long enough to make this table was 16 foot runs. So I have to take my 16 foot boards and first cut them down to the right length. Then I tried to take them over to the joiner to get a straight edge, and I quickly realized that me by myself just couldn't properly run these boards through the joiner. So I did what any professional woodworker would do, and I asked my mom to come help me. She held one end, and I tried to guide the piece through the joiner. But believe it or not, they were just too long, and I still wasn't happy with the edge I was getting on the board. So I abandoned the joiner idea, and I just pulled out the track saw with a crazy long track, and I used it to cut a perfectly straight edge on the pieces for my apron. 
Even cut down to 13 feet, the boards were just still giving me trouble. I almost didn't have enough room behind my table saw to run them through, but I managed it with resting one end up on my workbench and then kind of dropping it in, and I got them cut to the right size for my apron. And then just like my side pieces, I ran the apron through, giving a little eighth inch dadoed groove that again will hold our Z fasteners and hold our tabletop on. Now, I didn't want to try and clamp these huge 13 foot pieces to each end with some crazy long clamps or trying to make clamps hold hands or doing some other shady stuff. So whenever I run into a tough clamping situation, I like to use calls. Now calls are simply a piece of wood that you just glue on and all it does is act as an extra surface to hold a clamp. So I glued some plywood calls onto the end of each one of my apron pieces and this just allowed me to easily clamp the aprons into my end pieces without having to use some crazy long clamps. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are like, glue them on, well, how the heck do you get them off? Well, I just use CA glue, and you always want to use plywood for your calls because that thin layer of veneer on the outside of the plywood usually just chips right off, and all you have to do is sand it a little bit, and you will never know they're there. So I clamped my aprons in place. Now, I'm not actually gluing anything together at this point. I'm just getting it all in the correct position so that I can mark everything out to drill my mortises with the domino joiner. Then for the lower stretchers, like I said, we're not hooking this together at this point, so I don't really need to clamp it up. I just set them on top of some five inch spacer blocks to hold them in place while I marked everything out. And it should look something like this. Then after marking everything for our dominoes, I took it all back apart, but you'll notice that I temporarily clamped in my center legs. I did this so that I could easily just remove those two side pieces without actually having to separate them. This will make putting it back together much, much easier. So I grabbed the domino joiner and first I mortise out my legs using my patented hip thrust technique. People laugh at this, but honestly, I like to hold the domino joiner in place with both hands. So I find that if I put both hands on and get it nice and square, the hip thrust is the way to go. Next, I take my side pieces, lay them down on the floor, and I kind of use them as rests to set my um, apron and stretcher pieces on. And then I just hop down on the floor like a little boy, and I mortise out my apron pieces. Then I clamp everything back up to one side of my table. Again, without glue, I'm just holding it in place. You see, if I clamp it to one side, it'll make gluing up the other side much easier because everything's not gonna be flopping around. Then I just seat all my dominoes into one end of my table with an ample amount of glue, both on the dominoes and in my mortised out holes. And then I just, you know, smack it together with a rubber mallet and get everything clamped up and in place. As you can see, those calls are awesome because they allow me to clamp everything close to the source without having clamps stretched all the way across the 13 foot run. And then with one side clamped, I clamp the other side. Then I took off my temporary middle legs and I decided to get them all situated properly. Now, I could have just screwed them in place, maybe plugged some holes and doweled them or whatever, but I thought that was going to look too icky. So I decided just to throw them on the table saw with a crosscut sled and make some quick half laps so that I could lock them in place both on the upper apron and on that lower stretcher. Then I hooked the two legs together with some internal supports using, yep, yeah, my domino joiner. I mean, come on, let's be honest. What else did you think I was going to use? I then set my center legs aside to dry and my table base was ready to be taken out of clamps. So I removed my clamps and then just using a chisel, I just popped those calls right off. As you can see, there's just a little flake of veneered plywood and some glue, which will just sand right off. Next, I took a few clamps and I reversed them. So instead of uh, clamping pressure coming in, they were actually pushing out. And I used them to spread apart my top apron and those bottom stretchers. And then I slid my glued up center support piece in place. 
got it all lined up and then I removed the clamps added a little glue and then I just clamped that puppy in place it's just held on with glue and a hope and a dream I guess no I'm just kidding the glue's totally fine that's a very strong joint and it will never pop apart unless maybe you burned it or dropped it off a building or hit it with a car but even then it's it's probably gonna be fine we'll find out but your table should at this point look exactly like this so with my table base for all practical purposes complete I decided to start working on my top now I begrudgingly started to work on my top because I'm again working with 13 foot runs and they're just a pain in the butt I learned my lesson last time so I just didn't even try the joiner and went straight to the track saw to get a straight edge then I took everything over to the table saw again struggling with that distance behind my table saw as you can see I literally have about an inch to spare of room to run these things through but I got them all ran through to the proper width and then I just took them over to my table and I actually used the table as a workbench because my workbench isn't 13 feet long and I just glued them up right on top of the table base as if this table wasn't massive enough already it's also gonna have this giant shelving unit sitting on top of it I designed this upper shelving unit and had my friends over at Smith and Steel fabricate it for me but it still needed some wood shelves so I milled up a bunch of wood got it all cut to the proper width and just glued it all together into four big beefy solid blanks and set them aside so that they could dry instead of standing around waiting for glue to dry like I typically do I decided to start working on my lower slat structure now I was able to cut most of these slats out of all the off cuts from my 16 foot pieces I added a nice little chamfer to the top of each one and I pre sanded every single slat there was 34 of them in total so yeah my life sucks and then I jumped back over to start working on my shelves because my glues dry because I literally spent a lifetime sanding stupid slats sorry that was an exaggeration not literally a lifetime just like a really really long time anyways I cut my shelves to size just using the track saw and then I had to cut a notch in each one of the corners so that it could fit around the steel supports on the upper shelving portion then I just made sure all my shelves fit where they needed to go I also found out this thing kind of doubles as a bunk bed so I took a little nap and then I ran all the shelves through my planer to get them nice and smooth this is where having a 20 inch planer comes in real handy save me a lot of time on the sanding portion but of course I'm a woodworker so I still had to sand everything thoroughly then I jumped over to my tabletop and cut it to length man I do a lot of jumping around and woodworking maybe that's why it lends so well to my extreme ADD anyways I sanded the top thoroughly and then believe it or not I had to sand the base as well again thoroughly now if you've watched any of my videos in the past you've probably seen me use a lot of Rubio Monocoat it's definitely my preferred finish however this customer wanted a stain to match some existing pieces so I had to go back to my roots which was Minwax special walnut stain coated in a layer or two of Minwax wipe on polyurethane so I stained and I, I stained some more and then I stained once again and again and again 13 feet over and over and over again let's just say there was a lot of staining but finally the staining was done and I applied three coats of wipe on poly the way I do this is I just wipe it on with a rag ha, <laughs> because it's wipe on poly let it sit sand with about 500 to 600 grit sandpaper then I wipe it again let it sit sand it again and then finally wipe it one more time 
With everything stained and finished, I started installing my slats. I saved this to last because there was no way in heck I wanted to try and stain and finish those slats in place. Now, this is where some of you might cringe watching me do this because I'm just nailing them in place with a 16 gauge nailer. But this is where you have to really know your client. This is a display unit going in a retail store. Sure, I could have spent time, you know, doing some hidden fasteners or maybe some through dowels to make them really look awesome. But to be honest, they just weren't paying me enough money to do that sort of thing. So I just used a little pre-cut spacer and I just tacked them in place. And honestly, you couldn't really even see the nails. Then mustering every ounce of strength I had left, I slid the giant top onto the base and got my first glimpses of what the finished table would look like. Just so you can have that same first glimpse, here it is, in a slow-mo pan. 13 feet of glorious wannabe walnut, AKA stained poplar. Now, come on, be honest. Can you even notice those 16 gauge nails at the bottom? Exactly. Then with a little help, I lifted the upper shelving unit into place and installed all my shelves. This was just a test fit to see what it would look like before we loaded it all up in the trailer, hauled it down to its final resting place. That sounded a little dark and ominous. No, it's a um, glorious and beautiful new home at a store called Passion Flower Design in Eugene, Oregon. So if you're ever in Eugene, and you want to stop by, tell her I said hello. The piece of furniture, not the owner of the shop. Now do yourself and me a favor and watch one of these other videos. Oh yeah, and subscribe.